And now let's move to the second big way that stimulant formulations differ. And that has to do with their isomer mix. And this is going to sound confusing, but I promise it's not as complicated as it sounds. So both amphetamine and methylphenidate have two enantiomers. So enantiomers are molecules that are mirror images of each other. So the best example is your left and your right hand. So your left and your right hand are mirror images. So they look incredibly similar, but you can't superimpose them on one another. And the enantiomers can have different effects on the body. And we see this a decent amount in psych drugs. So we see citalopram and escitalopram. We see ketamine and esketamine and modafinil and armodafinil. So for the amphetamines, the left hand is levoamphetamine and the right hand is dextroamphetamine. For methylphenidate, the left hand is levomethylphenidate and the right hand is dexmethylphenidate. So first let's look at the amphetamine enantiomers. So dextroamphetamine is two to four times more potent than levoamphetamine. And we also know that levoamphetamine lasts longer and it has a higher risk of cardiac effects. So one little simplification I like to think about is that dextroamphetamine has a higher effect on dopamine and levoamphetamine has a higher effect on norepinephrine. So it's the dextroamphetamine that causes more of the euphoria and the mental stimulation. And it's the levoamphetamine that causes more of that jittery fight or flight stimulation and has more of the effects on the cardiovascular system. And then looking at methylphenidate, so it's dexmethylphenidate that's considered the pharmacologically active form. So it's dexmethylphenidate that accounts for nearly all the drug's potency. So the levomethylphenidate doesn't do much pharmacologically, but it might prolong the elimination of the dextromethylphenidate. So it extends the duration of action of the dextromethylphenidate, and it might pull down the peak a little bit. So now knowing all this information, we now have one way that we can split up all the different stimulants. So just a small pause in the video, if you enjoyed this content or my other content, definitely head over to psycho.farm and check out the new antidepressant course. So I put together a course with a ton of videos that go over depression, SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, MAOIs, and the atypicals. I made it with the intent to be accessible and practical. I think it's worthwhile if you're a student or a practicing psychiatrist, you'll still get something out of it. But let's get back to the video. So even though all these different stimulants have a ton of different names, and a ton of different release mechanisms, they all end up being D and L amphetamine or D and L methylphenidate. So methylphenidates come in two different isomer mixes. So there's formulations that come in a racemic mixture. So racemic is just a fancy way of saying it's 50% the D enantiomer and 50% the L enantiomer. So racemic just means the mixture has both the left and the right hand. And then there's formulations that come as just dexmethylphenidate. So to say that again, there's two different isomer mixes for methylphenidates. It either comes as all dexmethylphenidate or it comes as a 50-50 mix of the two enantiomers. Amphetamines come in three different isomer mixes. So it either comes as pure dextroamphetamine, then it also comes in a one-to-one -one ratio of the D and L enantiomer, which is the race mix mixture, and then it also comes in a three-to-one ratio of dextroamphetamine to levoamphetamine. So to say that again, amphetamines come in three different isomer mixes, and those three are 100% dextroamphetamine, 75% dextroamphetamine, or 50% dextroamphetamine. So let's take a look at one of the most popular stimulants, Adderall, to make more sense of this. So Adderall is called mixed amphetamine salts, and that's because it contains four different salts of amphetamine. So when we look, it's 25% dextroamphetamine sulfate, 25% dextroamphetamine saccharate, 25% amphetamine sulfate, and 25% amphetamine aspartate monohydrate. So it sounds super confusing, but it's not. Just ignore the salts. The salt part, which is the sulfate and the saccharate and the aspartate monohydrate, they have nothing to do with the mechanism of action. How it works is that the salt comes off of the amphetamine and the salt does absolutely nothing and the amphetamine is entirely responsible for the effect. The different salts just make it so that it gets absorbed into the body at different rates. So by having a ton of different salts, it gives it a more consistent and extended release compared to just a single salt formulation. So like I said, in terms of the effect, the more important thing is the ratio of D to L amphetamine. So the fact that half the salts are a race mix mixture and half the salts are just D amphetamine, that means it's a three to one ratio of D amphetamine to L amphetamine. So we can sort the different stimulants that are available by their isomer composition. So let's start with the amphetamines. You can get an isomer mixture that contains 50% D amphetamine and that's brand name Evikio. Then there are the amphetamines that contain 75% D amphetamine. So this includes Adderall, Adderall XR, Mydeus, Adzenes, Dianavil XR, 
Adzanese XR ODT, and Adzanese ER. In the next section, we'll learn the differences between these medications. Then there are the amphetamines that are 100% dextroamphetamine. These include Dexedrin, or brand name Zenzetti, Dexedrin XR, which is also called Spansials, Vyvanse, and Procentra. Then when we look at the methylphenidate brand names and their isomer compositions, the first composition would just be a race mix mixture of methylphenidate. This includes Ritalin, Methylin, Ritalin SR, Metadate ER and CD, Ritalin LA, Concerta, Aptensio XR, Adhansia, Jornet PM, Cotempla XR ODT, Quilichu ER, Quilavant XR, and Daytrana. Again, we'll learn the differences in the next section. Then there are the formulations that come as just dexmethylphenidate. That includes Focalin, Focalin XR, and Asteris. All right, this brings us to the third way that stimulants differ, and that's by their form of administration. So manufacturers have made stimulants available in a ton of different routes of administration. So they come in pills slash tablets, orally dissolving tablets, chewables, liquids, and patches. So here's a nice chart of the different names of the medications and the form that they come in. So maybe you're wondering why are there all these different ways of taking the stimulants? So it might be helpful to know that changing the form of administration of a medication can potentially extend the patent protection. So it's a strategy used by pharmaceutical companies to extend the patent of a drug. Now the second reason there's a ton of different forms of stimulants is that these medications are used a lot in kids. So you can argue that a lot of these medications are easier for kids, especially those who have difficulty swallowing medications. So I'll just read out all the different ones that aren't the pill slash tablet. So ODT stands for orally disintegrating tablet. So these are medications that dissolve in your mouth rather than needing to be swallowed. So there's a methylphenidate orally dissolving tablet and that's Cotempla. And then there's an amphetamine orally dissolving tablet and that's Adzanese XR. The next route of administration is chewable medications. So here's a methylphenidate that's brand name Quilichu ER. Quilichu kind of sounds like a Pokemon to me, but it's a cherry flavored chewable form of methylphenidate. And I should have mentioned Cotempla is grape flavored and Adzanese is orange flavored. So yes, it does give me the heebie-jeebies that you can get your stimulant in any flavor. But it's not for me to judge how you choose to trick your children into taking stimulants. All right, the next form of administration is liquids. So by the wonderful people who brought you Quilichu, there's the liquid form Quilavant XR, which is a banana-flavored methylphenidate. I love the banana flavor. Oh boy. All right, so then there's also amphetamine liquids. So there's Adzanese ER and Dianavol XR. And Dianavol comes in bubblegum. Then there's also a liquid that's just the dextroamphetamine, and that's called Procentra. Procentra is also bubblegum flavored. All right, the last form of administration is patches, and that's brand name Daytrana. So Daytrana is a methylphenidate patch. Some benefits of the patch is it avoids first pass metabolism. And it sort of has an off switch in that you can remove the patch, and after you remove the patch, the medication stops working after like two to three hours. Downsides are that it can cause skin irritation, and the FDA warned us that for some people it caused a permanent loss of skin color. All right, just to recap everything so far, we see stimulants differ by four major things. The first difference is whether it's an amphetamine or methylphenidate. The second difference is the isomer ratio. So amphetamines come as 50%, 75%, and 100% dextroamphetamine. And then the methylphenidates come as dexmethylphenidate or a race mix mixture of methylphenidate. Then the third big difference is the route of administration. So stimulants are available as pills slash tablets, orally dissolving tablets, chewables, liquids, and patches. And then the next big difference that we'll be going over in the next video is the different delivery systems that the medications have. So this has an impact on the onset of action and the duration of action, which plays a big role in symptom management. All right, thanks for watching.